Good morning and uh, welcome to today's webinar. And uh, the topic we are going to talk about today is on cricket bats and the model analysis of cricket bats. Um, the outline um, is we'll start with showing some results of experimental model analysis done on cricket bats and uh, estimation of the resonant frequency and uh, damping from uh, cricket bats and an illustration of results. Just to set the context, um, cricket bats are made uh, in different uh, sizes and uh, correspondingly uh, different uh, rates and uh, they are made of wood. So the general notion when somebody looks at a bat is, okay, um, when you are doing any vibration testing on a bat, can you get strong enough signals to study bat uh, for their resonant frequency and damping. And uh, this is the curiosity that got us started on doing a study on bats. And also, when you look at various bats, you can imagine, say, when a batsman is uh, playing, uh, when the ball hits the bat, uh, there is some vibration. So the performance of the bat can be studied by studying how the bat performs under uh, dynamic loads. So one of the fundamental techniques uh, for studying um, systems or components uh, from dynamics point of view is model analysis. So we use experimental model analysis as a technique to show a bat in a new light. Say we, it's made of wood and uh, it has a certain shape and uh, weight. And uh, given that, then we do experimental model analysis and uh, we look at the resonant frequencies and uh, damping. Are we able to make some statements about uh, bats that are of different kinds? That's really when we got started. And uh, we plan to have a series of webinars on this topic. And this is just the first one where we took um, two bats, uh, which are different uh, shapes and uh, different weights, and uh, we did model analysis on these bats through experimental methods. And uh, we collected the signals, did analysis of these signals, and uh, we got some interesting results, and we are going to share with you in this presentation. So let's look at the first bat. So this is the experimental uh, setup. So here is the bat, and uh, we hang it using these bungee cards to simulate a free-free boundary condition. And the dimensions of the bat are given here. It's 800 millimeters in uh, length, and this width on an average is 104 millimeters. And overall, the bat weighs 720 grams. And the material is wood. And uh, we also did uh, finite element analysis uh, for this bat to estimate the resonant frequencies through uh, simulation. And uh, for that purpose, we used Young's modulus and the density and Poisson's ratio as is shown here. For the experimental setup, we had the free free boundary condition simulated, as you saw in the last slide. And uh, we did an impact test on the bat using a hammer with a force rating of 400 Newton and uh, a frequency range up to 8 kilohertz and having a sensitivity of 11.2 millivolts per Newton. And uh, the response to the bat was measured using an accelerometer with a sensitivity of 100 millivolts per G. And uh, it's a uniaxial accelerometer. We used a data acquisition system with a sampling rate of 52 kilohertz and it's a four channel system with a 24 bit ABC. Now, on one channel, you are reading the signal from a hammer that strikes the bat, and uh, the response from the accelerometer is measured on another channel. And uh, when you look at the signals, it will look like this. So, what you have here is a plot of the force given to the bat with the hammer as a function of time. So very close to the origin, there is a peak, and uh, the force of about 83.57 Newton. It is 
given to the bank. Now, accelerometer is mounted at various locations along the length of the band, and in one location, the signal captured is what is shown in this slide. So the response, as is expected, is starts out as a peak, and then it gradually uh, goes to zero because of the damping in the band. And the common, uh, the intuition would be, since it is made of wood, um, there is a lot of damping, and uh, we won't get a strong enough uh, signal. That is not the case, as you seen here, we get really strong signals. So you go ahead and take these signals, which are plotted as a function of time, and uh, translate them into frequency domain, and we compute the frequency response function. So here is a plot of frequency response function. And uh, the amplitude is shown in the graph in the top, and the phase is shown in the graph in the bottom. We see many graphs corresponding to the 20 points on the bat, along the length of the bat, where the accelerometer was mounted and uh, signals were uh, collected. So the range of frequencies up to which we collected uh, data was up to 5 kilohertz. And what we are focusing on here is the first three resonant frequencies. So 221.5 hertz, 587.65 hertz, and 1076.96 hertz. Again, I want to emphasize the fact that um, it's not very well damped, and uh, you get a strong signal at the resonance for each of these uh, low modes, lower modes. Again, to study the signal-to-noise ratio, here we show an overlay plot where one plot is the frequency response function amplitude and the other plot is the coherence. And wherever you have a resonance, the coherence is uh, plotted on a scale of uh, uh, negative to zero, and wherever it is zero, it is good coherence. And uh, near the resonances, we have good coherence, as you can see in the first mode, second mode, and the third mode. Then the next step is to estimate the damping properties of the material of the bat. And uh, we can do that by taking the frequency response function and uh, applying a parameterization technique, cloud fitting technique, to fit a model to the frequency response function and uh, extract the model parameters. So one of them is damping. And uh, this table lists the first three resonant frequencies and their corresponding damping factors given in terms of Q factor. So 221.5 hertz, the Q factor is 48.9, and the 587.65 hertz, the second natural frequency, and the Q factor is 69.9, and the third resonant frequency is 1076.96 hertz, and the corresponding Q factor is 29.95. As I mentioned already, we also did simulation using finite element analysis and uh, the corresponding mode shapes. So the first mode, since this is a free free condition, the shapes that you would get would be similar to that of a, a beam in free free condition. So the first bending mode, then the second bending mode, and the third bending mode. So these are the shapes corresponding to the resonant frequency. So the first resonant frequency experimentally uh, calculated as 221.5 and what is the range of simulation is 255.76 and uh, for the second resonant frequency the 587.65 in comparison with 678.97 and third resonant frequency is 1076.96 from experiment and 1299 hertz from simulation and uh, to get a, a quantification of the extent of correlation between the experimental data and the simulation data, we use model assurance criteria. So for the first three modes from experiment, for comparison with the first three modes from SEM, when you look at the diagonal uh, values, it's 0 0.96 for the first mode, and 0 0.93 for the second mode, and 0 0.72 for third mode. So for one batch, we have shown the results for experimental model analysis and the results from simulation and the correlation between them. So the purpose of this uh, approach is to lay out a, a method 
which can be used for studying, say, a group of bats and uh, see uh, how the properties vary. So now, we took the second bat, which is of the same material, and but of different dimensions, and uh, significantly different weight. So it is 1.2 kilograms in weight, and the uh, experimental setup is shown here. So we have the bat in 3 feet boundary condition, with an accelerometer mounted at one of the measurement points. The test setup is exactly similar to what was followed for the first bat. These are the stimulus and response signals. Um, you can see that the response signals are slightly different from what we had for the first bat. So that would reflect in, in the frequency values and the damping values. Now these are the frequency response function amplitude and phase for 20 points and uh, the first resonant frequency occurs at 108.73 hertz, second resonant frequency at 375.56 hertz and the third resonant frequency at 638.18 hertz. This shows a plot of frequency response function amplitude in red and uh, coherence in green. And here for the first mode we have close to zero coherence zero coherence for the second and the third mode. This signifies a good um, signal that can be used for uh, further processing. So here we are using curve fitting to estimate the damping and it is shown for one of the frequency response functions. Here is a summary of the results for the first, third and first, second and third resonant frequency. 108.73 hertz with a Q factor of 23.71. The second mode it is 375.56 hertz with a Q factor of 21.34. Third mode 638.18 hertz with a Q factor of 17.33. So now let's put the results together. Uh, results from the first batch experimental data and uh, the second batch experimental data. And there are some differences. Uh, primarily, second batch is heavier than the first batch. So the general intuition is the resonance frequencies will be lower. And as you can see, they're significantly lower, and uh, there is a change in the damping values also. So for the first mode, we had 221.5 hertz for the first batch, and 108.73 hertz for the second batch. And for the second mode, at 587.65 hertz for the first batch, in comparison with 375.56 hertz for the second bat. And uh, for the third mode, for the first bat it is 1076.96 hertz, and the second bat it is 638.18 hertz. So when the weight changes, we are seeing a shift in frequency. So the key is, it also, um, the key is um, there is strong set of signals that you can capture with a modal test done with a hammer and from the frequency response function we are able to estimate this. So using modal analysis as a technique it is possible to study the vibration characteristics of a bat uh, which can throw light on uh, which is a better bat so to say. So there are some more uh, studies we are doing and that would be the topic for webinars in the future. So um, this brings us to the end of the presentation and uh, we'll take some questions. Thank you.